Television Terror is a ferocious dive into the unknown. Directed by Charlie Paterni, written by J. Randall Johnson and G.J. Pruss, and shot by Robert Draper. Based on a story from The Haunt of Fear, number 17. Don't touch that dial. Today we are shining a spotlight on one of the most unique comic stories we've covered so far. The Babbitts, a typical American family, turn on their television set. They tune in to watch investigative reporter Al Hunt, who is going to prove once and for all if an allegedly haunted house is actually haunted on live TV. Hunt is joined by professor of the London Society of Psychic Research, John Poltergeist. Yes, you heard that name right. Professor Poltergeist tells the story of the house. Mr. Creedmore didn't get along with his wife until one night he was found dead. Suicide by hanging. But rumor had it that he didn't kill himself, but was in fact murdered by his wife and her lover. They too were later found hanging from the very same spot as Mr. Creedmore. The show has a similar setup, with Horton Rivers investigating the Ritter house where Ada Ritter murdered her elderly tenants for their social security checks. And now, five years later, after Ada's suicide and rumors of ghosts, Horton Rivers is braving this scary house, joined by viewers like you, watching from the safety of their homes. Is this modern day chamber of horrors truly haunted? Tonight, we'll find out. Because I'm going inside the Ritter house. Ah. You'll be with me on this special haunting edition of Horton Rivers Live. Nobody has lived in the Creedmoor house for 60 years. Everyone knows it's haunted. Heavy stuff, but we can't keep the audience waiting. Al Hunt is going into the Creedmoor house with a portable camera feeding a cable to the TV truck. Professor Poltergeist will be the only person joining him to stir up the spirits. Though, the professor has his warnings. The two head into the house. Who knows what awaits them? Horton Rivers briefly interviews Roland the Psychic, who says you couldn't pay him to set foot in the Ritter house, and he doesn't think Rivers should go in either. Would you enter it with us? You couldn't pay me to go in there. Nor do I recommend you go either. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another expert opinion, and an opinion we're going to have to defy in order to bring the story home to you. Of course, the cocky fool isn't going to listen. He enters the front door with his cameraman alongside him. The TV truck switches the feed to Hunt's camera. We now have a found footage comic book. Once inside, Al places the camera on the floor so that both he and the professor can be seen. John feels the presence of something supernatural coming from upstairs. Al is having a good time, trying to keep things light for his audience. John heads up to the second floor, but Al stays behind to show off the room to the viewers. Horton is followed by his cameraman as he gives a tour of the rooms. There isn't much to see yet, but you have to admit this guy knows how to talk and keep things moving. The rats give him a good scare though. But look at the counter. Canned goods, foodstuffs, dishes, plates. <laughs> Kidney beans. It's as though Ada Ritter never left. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Moving on to the basement, Horton gives us some history about the murders, leaving his audience with a tease ahead of the commercial break. Ten seconds to commercial. Perhaps an insatiable appetite for bloodletting. But as we search for clues, which we'll do when we come back, We'll find out. Out. Roll commercial. Take three. Shh. Cindy's sleeping. All right. Got that gang? Is that a killer? Yeah, yeah, we got it, Horton. Now get your ass upstairs. You got two minutes. Come on. While the professor is upstairs, Al shows off portraits of the Creedmoors to the camera. The sight of the paintings chill Al Hunt to the bone. He starts hearing things, but he thinks it's just his imagination or at least he hopes it is. He decides it's time to join the professor. During the commercials, Horton is on the phone with his crew. The network wants him to pick up the pace. The show feels like he's stalling for time. I'm telling you, this is a great show. The ratings are gonna go through the roof. The ratings are gonna be out the goddamn window if you don't do something to spice it up. What am I supposed to spice it up with? 
and that's when the voices start. Less than a minute until he goes live again, and of course the camera loses its connection. As the cameraman tries to fix the issue, Horton follows the sounds of dripping water into a room. There's an old man with a slashed throat waiting for him. Naturally, he is the only one who sees it. But he's not the only one who sees the doors and windows causing a fuss. Just in time for the camera to work again. We got picture. Get out of that commercial right now. You're on, Horton. You're on live. Get out there. Go. As Hunt heads up the stairs, something cold touches him. He drops the camera and calls out to the professor, but his cries go unanswered. Opening the door to the room where Professor Poltergeist is, Al peeks inside, only to immediately chicken out and slam the door behind him. The Ritter house is going berserk, even the door is bleeding. Roland gives Horton an explanation of the phenomena, and a warning. You were in danger the moment you crawled through the threshold. Booth, somebody is in this house. Somebody is in this house, please notify the authorities. Now this is the kind of juicy television the network loves, but Horton is in for the scare of his life. Oh my God, it's a trip. Horton, Horton, who's got the camera? Oh, Jesus! viewership is through the roof as Horton cries for help. His team has to make a choice. Get him out of the house or keep him in there. What do you want to do? We pull it now or we keep him in there? Oh, God! It's your call. Help me! Keep him in there. Damn, help me! Get me out of this house! It's Horton versus a chainsaw-wielding ghost. He puts up a fight at first, but this television program doesn't get a happy ending. Al is going insane from fear, believing he hears the Creedmoors speaking to him. They want him to take a rope and hang himself. Al happily obliges. Through the crack of an open door, we see his body swinging. And then, due to unforeseen circumstances, tonight's broadcast is being cut short. All those wholesome families watching at home couldn't really have seen a man hang himself in a haunted house on live TV. Could they? Television Terror is one of the most highly regarded episodes of Tales from the Crypt, but watching it immediately after reading the original story, I wish it kept the first-person camera's perspective from the comic once they enter the house. We do get a handful of POV shots, but it doesn't create the same impact as on the page. There are also some quick-cut flashbacks to the Ritter murders whenever Horton opens the door to a new room. But I feel interrupting the main plot like this cheapens the suspense. It breaks that feeling of following Horton Rivers through his report. The show does give us some banter between Horton Rivers and his crew, establishing him as a more sleazy host than his wholesome 1950s counterpart. His staff really doesn't like him, and I don't feel too bad for him in the end. Viewed from the eyes of an innocent family, the sweetness of Al Hunt makes his ending so much darker. Plus the comic, as short as it may be, keeps things mysterious. I'm still thinking about that final page. Be sure to seek out this story. Its chilling atmosphere won't keep you hanging. <laughs>